Hi gamers, today we're going to look at the game Dark World. Let's check it out. Alright, so in this game, uh, you will play as one of these four characters here. As you see, uh, it doesn't matter which character you pick, they're basically all the same. They do have different weapons. Uh, the weapons are removable. For instance, you can just pop them back out and pop anything else in there. That's for something else. Also, they have a base here where if you see it has an 8 there, every time you take hits, and this one's a little tight here. Let me see if I can click it. There you go. Went down to 7 there. Uh, you, can, you start off, everyone starts off with 8 hits. And as the game moves on, every time they take a hit, the dial will be shut down. Okay, so how you start off. Each player will pick whoever they want. Some player is going to be Korak, who's this happy guy sitting on the throne right here. Let me bring him in to you. Oh, I'm the bad guy. Okay, so Korak stays on his throne. That, that dude actually doesn't move. It's one of these four heroes that will be moving. Now, uh, you're going to take one of these four heroes and... You're going to also take three cards, three of these cards to start off. And these cards represent only two things, hits, extra hits, or misses. And these are just extra cards you can have in your hand. You're actually going to be throwing these dice around. And each dice has certain swords on there. That's how many hits you will get. Some of them have no hits. It means you didn't get any hits on them. Uh, so you can add to your die count with extra hits. And when the bad guy is attacking, you can subtract from their die count by playing your miss cards. So what happens is you have three actions every turn. So each player has an action. Now opening a door, and these are actually real good plastic quality uh, doors here. Each door opens up into a different room. And if I can grab my camera up here, you can see there are several different rooms. This board is massive. Uh, so several different rooms you can enter. Now, uh, that's important when you open doors because if you ever do get counted down, like if you get knocked unconscious, like all your points go away, you'll come back here and one of the things you can do is go through this teleport. But the teleport only brings you to the nearest open door. So there's some secret passageways I'm going to show you in a minute. If you didn't open certain doors, that's where you'll respawn. So it kind of hurts you there in a little bit. Uh, but that's the teleportation. Another thing while I'm here, if someone does get un knocked unconscious, they come back here, they can spend an entire turn in the healing fountain and they'll get back all eight of their points. When they respawn, they only get one point. They can charge back into the fray with just one point. Uh, but if they go into the fountain, they spend a turn, you can turn their dial back to eight points. So why would they be knocked unconscious? Well, there's several bad guys in this. As you can see, I've, I've pre-placed them on the board. You're not supposed to do that. It actually tells you how many uh, villains you're supposed to put in each one of these rooms. One and two, you get certain points here. Three and four, certain points. And what I mean by points, underneath each of their bases are different points. Those are both threes. Let's see. He is a two. There you go. I think this guy right here is a one. Yeah. So they're all different point values. And the book will tell you how many point values you can put in each room. Now you don't have to preload it here. You have to wait till they open the door and then Korak, whoever's playing Korak there, he gets to decide who goes in each one of these rooms. Now you also see in these rooms are a little treasure chest. Let me show you a treasure chest here. If you come across a treasure chest in a room, first off, you have to defeat all the bad guys who are in that room. Once you've done that, if you land on the treasure chest, you can open it up and, oh, it's a little weapon. It's a golden weapon. And so let's say this was my character. Oh, and as you see, his sword just popped right on out there. But I would remove his gray sword and I would put my golden sword in there. And what does that mean? Well, that means instead of rolling two sword die, I can now roll three sword die for the rest of my turn. Now you can only have one golden weapon. After you've claimed a treasure chest, you can't claim any more. You have to leave them for the other people who are playing with you. And by the way, these treasure chests are really good quality. If you can look at them, uh, it's almost like they're a toy there. So anyway, how does combat work? Well, let's say this is my first turn. I'd open the door at no cost to me. And by the way, how do we determine turn order? Well, that's going to be determined through the mace. Now if you look up here at the set pieces, there is this big mace here. What is this? It comes off, and if you see, it has each person's color. Let's see if I can get that little better picture of that. There it is. 
And so what you're going to do is you're going to shake the mace and then drop and the little color balls will fall in there. So in this example, green goes first, then yellow, then blue, then red. And then the, after everyone takes a turn, and Korak will take a turn after all the heroes are done taking their turn, uh, what they're going to do is you're going to shake the mace again. And this time it's, oh, blue, uh, green, yellow, and red. So the turn order will always change, and that's for the mace of destiny or whatever they call it. Um, it fits right in there. Like super cool. This is a super cool set. I can't tell you how good the quality is here. Uh, Different monsters that I have, well, I've already shown you an orc already, but I also have uh, skeletons as well that they can fight. They also give you uh, mummies and ogres as well. Uh, so there's different ones you can uh, play with to defeat. And of course, there's a mana core here. Whoa, he's, he's a big one to defeat, a six. Uh, of course, you're going to need some extra hit cards for him. But anyway, how's battle work? Well... If you look back down here, let's go over here. He goes through this door. By the way, I cannot put a, uh, it, it says this in the rule book, I can't put a uh, monster on the door entrance. He has to be away from the door. So when they come in, they can move, and now he can choose to fight. Now he doesn't know what my number is, and he's going to roll two die. So let's say he rolls these two die here, and they are, oh, it's just a one. Okay, now he's got to decide is one enough to destroy that. He didn't know, this may be a two, maybe a three. But remember, he has some cards he can play. Remember, he had these three cards. So he says, ah, you know what? I'm gonna add a card to that, just in case he's a two. All right, so let's see. He reveals it, and it's a one. He killed him, hooray. But what happens if it was a two? Well, he'd still kill it, because he had two hits. Uh, he could have just hit it with one die, but he didn't know that at first. He had to test and fight him first off. Let's say it was three, if there was a three underneath here. Well, he wouldn't defeat him, so then he would lose this card and he'd have to roll again and see if he could get a three or higher. And that time, woohoo, he did it and he defeated him. Now, when you defeat someone, three things happen. First off, you get the monster. He comes to you, he's gonna count with a point at the end because it's a point system to see which one of the four heroes will win if the heroes win at all. Because, of course, Korak has his say, he may win it all. Uh, but anyway, so you get the monster, which is worth a point. You also get the, what item is attached to him. And these things can come off. I'm not going to take this one off here. But this is a uh, Voss here. This gives you full health. So you can drink it and you can turn your little dial back up to eight. Uh, other weapons and stuff here. Here is a shoes that give you an extra action. They have little wings on them, if you can see that. And then the other one, let's see, here's one. Uh, a grenade, a flame grenade. That's kind of weird, but uh, when you throw a flame grenade in with a group of monsters, let's say these monsters get thrown a flame grenade. You have to be at least two spaces away. You can't throw it from three spaces, and you can't throw it from one. Two spaces away. If you hit that monster, that monster suffers three damage. Was it enough to kill him? Yes, it was. And any monster next to them or anyone next to them, even heroes. If a hero's next to them and you threw that grenade, they're going to take two damage points from that grenade. But this other monster, let's say he takes two damage, and no, he's a four, so it doesn't kill him. He's okay. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of how those flame grenades work. And so you can throw them in with hopefully a group of weaker monsters there, but you won't ever know. But yeah, those are the three types of things that you can have uh, when you kill the monster. Also, when you kill a monster, you're going to get an extra card that you can play. So there's an extra card to his deck, a swing and a miss from the monster. Also, they will get coins. Coins will be face down. You may not turn them up until the end of the game because each one underneath has a certain value, one, two, or three. Uh, this also comes in at the uh, end, of the, end of the round when you are scoring points. Got to keep going about the nice, nice, nice quality here. They put these little things to hold them together. Super tough, super tough plastic. It clips onto this. This thing holds everything in place. There's some on the sides too. Now, the other thing I haven't talked about yet is secret passageways. As you see, this is a bookshelf with the numbers one, two, three, four, five. What's going to happen if a hero lands on that square as an action, they can roll a 10 sided die to see if they can use the secret passageway and kind of skip ahead through the map. So let's say I did that and I rolled a two. Okay, so. That's a two, so I can go through. So it opens that door, 
and he pops right in and here he is and now it's a window. So now he's in this room here. Now what if there was a monster standing right here? You know, because they can stand next to that one. They can't stand on entrances of the secret passageways, but they can stand behind them. If someone were to open this door, the, the hero would go through, but the monster would come through out here. <laughs> so I think that's kind of cool that it made that happen. Uh, also, of course, you see this one. To get to the second one, you have to roll one, two, three. I don't know if I can do that, but let's see. Uh, no, well, no, I rolled a seven. See that? That's a seven. So Noah did not get in. So I could use another action if I had another action, but I have to also, of course, be on that square. And then I could skip through there, and that is also a mirror at the end there. Um, but those are just easy ways to skip ahead. Now, of course, like I said, if you get knocked out and you have to go to the portal here, you'll go to the next closed door in the list. So if you went through a few things to open a few doors, you'll be stuck here having to go the long way around or trying to go through the secret entrances here. So, uh, but let's say that's the hero's turn and the heroes are slowly making their way up through here. By the way, when they go through this gate, no monsters may go through this gate, backwards or forwards, and heroes may not return into the dungeon rooms once they've entered the main throne room. They have to battle all of Korak's goons in order to survive. But once all four heroes take their turn, what happens? It will now become Korak's turn. Now, Korak can move as many monsters uh, give him three actions as he has on the board. Now remember, this is pre-set up. Uh, I would usually only have monsters where the doors were open. So let's say these three doors were open. All right. So if that was the case, I could move them three each or have them move once and fight twice. You know what I mean? I have three different actions for each one of my goons that are left open on the board. Okay, anyone who's behind closed doors, I haven't even set those pieces out yet, so I don't even know uh, where they are. The heroes don't know where they are, and I can't move people who don't exist. Uh, even these people, and of course, Korak never moves. All right, so another thing that Korak can do is he can actually summon the Haunter. Whoa, I'm the Haunter. And what does he do? Well, I've got to roll my lovely 10 sided die. And if you notice on the side of the board here, it has numbers going one through nine. Uh, so if I roll any one of those numbers, the haunter is basically just gonna fly across that number. Any monsters in his path would be destroyed. Any heroes would be knocked unconscious and go back to the uh, beginning here. Now, if I roll a 10, obviously the Haunter isn't up, and if they make it to the throne room, of course the Haunter isn't of use anymore because he can't haunt over there. You cannot destroy the Haunter, uh, and by the way, they didn't even need to make a piece for the Haunter, really. Uh, you could actually just put him over to the side here and say, okay, anyone on row 5 gets hit, killed, or knocked out. Uh, so the Haunter, man, he's a wild card. You don't have to use him, but you can if you want to knock some heroes unconscious or put him back at the beginning, kind of stall and delay them. Uh, he's basically just a little pesky guy there, but kind of a cool figure, cool idea. Anyway, at the end of it all, when you're fighting, you're making your way up through the throne room, you're probably going to fight this huge manacore. And then as you're fighting around here, Korak's just sitting there, I guess, laughing. <laughs> And finally, you see there's one spot on this throne room. Well, whoever, whatever heroes up on there, they get a chance to fight Korak. Now, Korak is a seven. So there's no way, even with three die, you could roll a seven. So you want to make sure you have some extra hit cards available because you're going to need them when fight facing Korak. Now, if you're doing with a, if you're just fighting him with a regular weapon, you roll two die. And of course, golden weapon, you're going to roll three. Korak when it's his turn, will always respond and smack you with three hits. And if he knocks you unconscious, you're out of the game at this point. So you need to make sure you have lots of healing potions and lots of cards, like missed cards, for him. You may want to save them up. Hopefully you didn't use them all when you're battling up his horde and his armies here. All right, so what happens is, of course, whoever can get seven or more points against Korak wins, and the heroes win. If Korak knocks all four of them unconscious, Korak wins. Now, if Korak wins, that's it. Four people are very unhappy. If the other four players team up together and beat Korak, then it comes to the points. And how points are decided is by you add up all the points of the monsters you killed. That's when you turn over all the coins to see who had the most points on the coins. 
Any unused hit or miss cards also count as points. And if you were the one who defeated Korak, you get five points. And the player with the most points, if you want to go that far, wins the game. And that is Dark World. Okay, so final thoughts on Dark World. What do I think about this game? Well, uh, I actually saw the game Hero Quest uh, online, and people were talking about it, raving about how great this game was, how they want to get copies of it again. I said, ooh, is this a game I'm interested in? Should I check it out? So I started looking into it, and the game just didn't look that interesting. And then I saw Dark World in my search. That game looked even more interesting. I was like, okay, I'd rather try out Dark World. Well, while I was traveling a lot this past year, I actually found the game at a really good deal. And so I decided to go ahead and get it. Now, this guy had tons of extras that he gave me. So I have almost doubles of everything. Uh, it looks like he, he took a couple of board game pieces and put them all together in an extra bag. Like, uh, I've got a character, and I should have shown him in the video, that I don't know what he goes to. I even got the expansions of this game, and... He doesn't look like any of the uh, expansion characters either. So I, he must have just thrown in some extra stuff that he had gotten. I don't know where this came from, too, if it came from Canada or overseas or whatnot. But uh, it really is a well-developed game. I mean, the door hinges look good. Uh, the pieces that you can take apart the sword and put in a golden sword. It's so awesome, yet so simple, but so beautiful to look like because it looks like a toy set. I mean, forget playing a board game. I'd actually, if I was a kid, I'd be playing with those, like, you know, real toys or everything. Uh, the chess, the chess there, real chess. They could have done this with cards. They could have done this with, you know, fixed figures. You just, you know, could have replaced your wooden sword with a golden sword or whatnot. But no, they went all out on this game. And the production quality is A+. The game is pretty easy to teach. Um, I've only played it with my little nephews, and they absolutely adored it. When they actually first saw the board game, I told them about it, and they didn't know what to think. And then when they saw it, they were like, Whoa, this is incredible. And they, they really, really, really love the game. And if you think about it, this game is kind of a precursor uh, to Descent, another game that's really popular right now. Uh, so a lot of people tell you Hero Quest is the way to go, but me, no way. I'm on the side of Dark World. Now, should you get this game? If you can find it at a decent price, sometimes the Dark World depends. Hero Quest is very expensive. A lot of people want to get it, and great. There's not that many people want to get Dark World, but still, I see it going for a pretty penny online here and there. Like I said, I got mine for super cheap. I got it for 30 bucks, and it's great. I don't think you can find it for that cheap. Maybe you can on the base set, but I got a great deal on it, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. I'm proud it's in my collection. And if it looks like a game that you would like, and if you find it at a decent enough price, then it's definitely worth your time. Because, like I said, production pieces alone look amazing. All right, folks, that is all the time I have for now. Until next time, gamers, game on.